Hey, time. this came in the mail today and let's see what's inside, shall we? <laughs> Good thing that box was already empty. Uh, let's do the actual unboxing now. So yeah, you might be wondering, why the hell do I have this shirt on acting like I don't like iPads? Well, it started out sometime 2010, I think. I was at the Republica uh, conference in Berlin, and that was 2010, the year the first iPad came out. And you know, the first thing that kind of weirded me out when that thing came out was the name because it sounded like hygiene products for women. Not, I mean, it still does, it's just sort of got used to the name. So the first iPad came out and to me it was just a huge, yeah, just a huge phone that you needed Wi-Fi for, for it to do anything. And it had the exact same apps as you did on your iPhone and it didn't do much more. There weren't a lot of apps and there was no big ecosystem. And at that conference, they had a custom t-shirt printing. Since the conference was always Republica, they had this re or re thing here. So I kind of thought it was funny to make a shirt like to don't unbox your iPad, rebox it and send it back because that was my theory or my thought process back then. And and I kind of have changed my mind over the years now. Back in 2017, I think, I bought an iPad Pro 10.5 inch, actually this one. I fell in love with it. This one has served me quite well. I wouldn't have even bought the new one if it weren't for my kid dropping this one and giving it a kind of a glitch now. Because it likes to just randomly restart sometimes for hours on end. It can be stable at sometimes, as long as you don't touch this region here, it gets kind of feely, I guess. It'll just start restarting and restarting for hours and hours on end, and if you're lucky, it'll just stop if you kind of shake it the right way. It's picky, and but the thing is, it's not reliable anymore. And I like to use my iPad for a lot of things these days, so I gotta have something reliable. And I gotta be honest, I've been eyeballing the new design they put to it uh, since it came out in 2018. It's just a bit slicker and I really like the smaller bevels, even though I thought it would make it harder to hold, but it's so good with palm rejection and touch rejection on the right spots that it doesn't really matter. And it just feels like a more polished product. The best thing about it though, is they finally fixed the pencil. Because I don't know if you have seen the previous model of how you had to charge this pencil. Let me, wait, hold on, let me show it to you. So when your previous pencil was empty, you would have to remove this cap and not lose it, I mind you. Um, but there was a little nifty hack. There were magnets here, so you can just uh, attach it here and if you get it in the right spot it will stay there but what you had to do to charge it was make it stick out of here and just hope to god no one especially if you have kids no one walks past and just like it's, it's so finicky i swear it, it still gives me anxiety just to look at it and hold it like this not having it laying on a table to charge safely somewhere that was kind of finicky so that's how you would charge this one 
and then it also went loosey-goosey all around the place. It's a round thingy. It rolls off of things all the time. That was kind of annoying. And I'm really glad they fixed it with this redesign. So what do I actually do on an iPad these days? Well, most of my note-taking is basically done on an iPad. I really love the pencil and digital notes because it's so much easier to take something and move it around and it gives me a different feel and I feel I have more control than when I'm taking notes on paper. I have a bit of a perfectionist vibe and this is sort of also why I started vlogging just to try and shake it because I know these aren't perfect and that is something I have to live with and it is something it's getting easier every time I do these so I'm gonna stick with this. So what I was trying to say, when I write notes on paper and I have to scribble something out, it really makes me cringe inside. And I know they're just notes, but I don't like it very much. And it sort of keeps me from actually taking more notes on paper or taking more notes in general. And that is where I love taking notes on a digital medium. Not only can I edit better and like refine my notes, but I can move things around. I can highlight things after the fact. If I don't like the highlight, remove it. It's not written in stone or ink on paper or whatever. So the other thing I really like using my iPad for is using it as a second screen while I'm working on something else. I like to have it open to use for communication apps like maybe a chat app, Discord or Messenger, Twitter, whatever have you. Just have it on the side so it's not taking any screen real estate on my big screen. I can keep focusing on what I'm doing there as long as I need to and if some message comes in and I feel it's something uh, I need to respond to. I can do it right there without moving anything on my main screen. So it just helps me to keep doing what I'm doing. And which is also sort of why I got that engraved on the back of the iPad. Keep doing what you're doing. So I mentioned I like to take notes with the iPad, but that's not the only thing I use the pencil for. Ever since one of my kids decided to take the Wacom tablet apart that I have, or rather the pen and destroy it, I've been using the iPad to edit photos with and the pencil is pretty good in Lightroom and Photoshop on the iPad, which is not a thing I would have believed to be a viable option, actually using Photoshop on an iPad. I can jump in there, do the fine edits I need to do with the pencil, and then go back on the desktop. And that's not the only thing the pencil is good for. I also like to use it when I explain things to the kids. I just open a good endless canvas app and just start drawing away and sketching away if they have a question where I'm just not sure if words alone will allow me to explain something in detail enough that'll actually convey the concepts that I'm trying to explain. And yeah, it's a good tool for that. And I think the kids really enjoy it because it's a more visual thing than just my words. They don't have to imagine as much or I can sort of steer the direction of the imagination a little bit more. And I find they give some more creative questions or more, well, deeper questions that lead to more understanding. And the, the one or other odd time, it'll lead to me having to actually research even more because their questions go way deeper than what I just by heart know of what I'm trying to explain to them in the first place. But yeah, that's a cool thing. So, you know, never stop learning because you'll need it. Yeah, this is my awkward face. I don't think I'm gonna cut this. I'll just leave it in. Yeah, you'll have to deal with that, but uh, you'll survive. <laughs> So I am no grand artist by any means, but I did sort of jump a bit or dip my toe into drawing on the iPad a bit. There are some really cool apps out there and so far I think my favorite one is Procreate or Adobe Sketch, I think it's called. Those two are my favorite right now and I've done a little bit of doodling here and there and it, it's a cool thing to just do when you want to relax a bit. Put on some lo-fi hip hop beats and just draw for an hour or whatever. So another cool thing I like to use the pencil for is annotating screenshots. When I have something I'm working on and I need to collaborate with someone and just convey my message, it's way easier to just take the pencil and circle and scribble and everything on your screenshot where you need it instead of trying to type out an email below it or whatever have you. 
it is so much more direct and it gets your point across way, way quicker. The last thing on my list I wanted to talk about is using it as an e-reader. It's a good replacement for a Kindle to me and I like reading on it more because not only can I just read my Kindle books on it, I can read books on Apple iBooks or whatever and also read my letter queue with Pocket. So if you don't know what Pocket is, Pocket is a tool that lets you save articles you come across for a later read. Like say for instance you get sent a link by someone to a cool news article and it really interests you but you're in the middle of work and can't spare like 10-20 minutes to read it right now. You hit a button on your browser to save that link to Pocket and later when you open the Pocket app all the things you save will be there usually even in a reader view where you just get the plain text without having to deal with ads or all the distracting stuff around that can be found on some sites. So what else have I been up to these days? Well, it's pretty much still day in day out, but I have been enjoying the outsides a bit more since spring is kicking in. The kids love going outside in the weather and for some reason they still ask, Daddy, are we allowed to go outside? Like, really? Of course you're allowed to go outside. Get the heck outside. But why do you even have to ask? Sure you're allowed outside, then. but they're sweet like that. They want to make sure we know where they are and I really love that about them. I actually wanted to film this video yesterday, but I couldn't quite because the delivery guy was, I don't know, playing a trick on me or whatever. I got a message after waiting all day saying I wasn't home. Seriously, in this day and age, I wasn't home? Where the hell do you think I was? Dude didn't even show up to our street. We live in a cul-de-sac. I would have seen him coming. I was waiting all day. I saw that tracking info parcel is with delivery man on the truck or whatever they say and then 1836 package wasn't delivered person not home I mean I got so first world problems mad you couldn't believe after I cooled down after like 10 or 15 minutes I think I just realized I should really appreciate that these people go from home to home and deliver things and they are doing what is still considered an essential service and i get that i mean i didn't order something that was super essential i need it for work and i use it for work i mean i didn't order a dildo or whatever if you go on the website all the essential items are are sold out until you restock and until you close this building shut it down dildos are not uh, essential items books for kids yes but dildos no. So I should just be chill. And I think that's a good thing to keep in the back of my head. Just be chill. There were plenty of things to be chill about these last few days. And I think that's just the message I should keep in the back of my head for the next few days. Just to remember to try and be a little bit more chill. Because I am noticing I am sort of twitchy or whatever you might want to say and I've noticed it around other people I think I might just actually need to go for a long walk on the weekend that sounds like a great idea seems uh every time I vlog I come back to the idea that I need long walks and that long walks help me maybe it's because I started my vlog with a the very first episode was me hiking through the woods doing some exploring. You know, I watched that episode again the other day and it felt kind of weird to watch it. I mean, it always feels weird to see yourself and hear yourself on camera, but it, it, I definitely noticed that I felt so awkward talking in there. And I kind of like that I don't feel as awkward as talking into the camera anymore as I did about a year ago. So if you believe I've gotten at least a little bit better at this by now, please leave a comment down below. And if you need some reference material, check out one of the older blogs I've did and just maybe just compare the two. Give me some notes, give me some pointers if, and I really appreciate you sticking into the end and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.